Back in the arrays video I did earlier, I mentioned building on top of arrays. You might want to do this because arrays inherently don't have an add or delete operation. You're pretty much just stuck with however much data you've allocated to it. So one way to deal with that is using array lists. Array lists essentially serve as a wrapper to arrays and will manipulate an underlying array to give it more functionality, which should allow you to add and remove values. Java actually has an implementation of array lists, although it's not the same as what I'll be showing you here, it's somewhat similar. And Python's lists are a lot closer to array lists than they are to arrays. So yeah, fundamentally array lists allow you to just deal with an ever growing amount of data and also provide some other operations if you want them. It does this by allocating more space for an underlying array than is needed and then resizing it if you use up all the space. So they keep track of the total allocated space compared to the amount of space you've actually used. Uh, and unused space is just um, values in the array that are just the default initialization values that you haven't written over yet with your own custom values. It's like you start with zero values and then you can write one and just keep overwriting those values in the array uh, until you fill up your array. And at which point the array list will reallocate that array and make it bigger. It does this by basically deleting it and recreating it somewhere else in memory with more space. So the add operation is where the reallocation is triggered if necessary. And it does this by checking to see if the used space is equal to the entire capacity of the array. And if it is, then it will expand it. The delete operation will work by just deleting a value at an index. And then it shifts all of the values to the left to overwrite that value that was deleted. And then after that, it shrinks the total size of the array list, as in the amount of items in it to account for the fact that you just deleted one. Keep in mind that these implementations of the operations are not exactly what you'd see everywhere. There's not really a standard for array lists as far as I've seen. It's just kind of the idea that it's an extendable array, sort of. Don't worry if this isn't quite making sense yet. I'll go over an example here. So we start with an empty array list that we've allocated two spaces for. The array list starts with a capacity of two and a size, as in the amount of items in it, of zero. So we can add the number five, which takes up the first slot and increases the current size of the array list to one. Next, we can add the number three. We know which slot to place the new value in based on the current size of the array list. So since it's of size one, we can place the number three into index one of our array, and that will fill up the second slot. The size is now increased to two. Since the size of our array list is now equal to the capacity of the underlying array, we must reallocate, basically delete and recreate the underlying array with a bigger size. A good strategy is to make the array twice as large as the previous one every time we resize. So with that in mind, we allocate an array of size four and set the capacity to four. We copy over our values, although if you do this in C, this is kind of done automatically, you'll see later. But the values get copied over and we just have extra unused space. And this extra space is enough for two values. So let's add the numbers seven and 14. The size of the array list is now at four, which is at its capacity. So we must reallocate the array and double the capacity again. We're left with a capacity of eight now. Now we have space to add even more values if we want. However, at this point, I'd like to remove something from my array list. Let's remove the number three, which is the value at index one. To do this, we just iterate over every value in the array list, starting from the three, and we copy the value after it into the current value. We copy the seven down into three and the 14 down into seven. Finally, we subtract one from the size of our array list so that the new values are placed at the end of the used space. Any new values would overwrite the theoretical junk data that would have been left over, so the extra 14 is sitting in that array. So that's basically how array lists work. Before I go over the C implementation, I'd like to go over the runtimes for the different operations. So to delete a value from the array list, if you notice, you have to shift all the values after it. So the delete operation takes O of n time. Even if the average delete is in the middle of the array, I went over this in the last video, since it averages out to n over two, if the size is n, um, you drop that coefficient and then you end up with O of n. Adding to the array list 
on average is O of 1. However, there is a worst case where upon addition, the entire underlying array needs to be reallocated, which is O of n time, because it has to free all of the data from the old array, uh, allocate a new one of the size you want, which is in our case, two times n, and then copy in the old data. So no matter how you look at it, it's like some multiple of n, and that's a coefficient, so you drop it, and the worst case is O of n. But like I said, the average is O of 1 because most of the time you do not have to resize the array. The update operation is O of 1. It's the same as a normal array because you can just access the element and write onto it. And then the read operation is also O of 1, same as arrays. So let's get into coding here. So I have just a basic C program here. I can run it and it just does nothing. So let's create our struct for our array list. So I'm going to do type def struct array list is going to be able to have a pointer to an integer of type data. Even though it's pointing to an integer, this is actually just going to be pointing to the beginning of an array of integers. Uh, also, I should add that I'm only going to handle integers for my array list. You can change it to do strings or whatever you want. But in my case, I'm going to be doing integers. So in size, so that's the current amount of items in here. So that'll start at zero in capacity. And then I'm going to call the type AL for array list. I'm going to define a constant here. I'm going to call it base capacity and I'm going to set it to 10. So this is how much the array size is going to start at. In the example, I started with two, but that's not a great size to start at. Um, although 10 is also kind of arbitrary. So now that we have our struct for our array list, I have to be able to create it and initialize it with all of its values. So I'm going to have a function, al star, so that's a pointer for an array list is being outputted, create al void. So I'm going to create a new pointer. So new al equals malloc size of al. So I'm just allocating space for the struct. This is not actually allocating space for the data yet. That's going to be pointing to nothing for now. So new array list capacity equals base capacity. So I'm initializing that to equal the base size. I have not actually created the array yet. I'll do that later. So the starting size is going to be zero because we start with zero items in our array list. So new AL data, and this is where our underlying array is, equals calloc, so clear allocation, um, new AL capacity. And then the size of it is going to be integer. So it's allocating space of the size of an integer times the capacity, which is just allocating an array of size capacity. So in our case, it's going to do the size of base capacity. So it's going to allocate enough space for 10 integers. With that, I can return the initialized array list and I can use it over here. So let's create my array list. So al my array list equals create al. And I'm going to do printf percent d new line and I'll do my array list capacity. So I'm just going to see what the capacity is. And you can see it outputted 10 here. So that means that's working. Our initialization is working properly. So now that I have my function to generate an array list, I need a function to add to it. So I'm going to do void append al, al star target al int value. So it's taking an array list, and then I'm going to add a value to that array list. As I mentioned in the example, you know where to add based on the current size of the array list. So since my size starts at zero, the very first item will be placed at index zero in my array. So I'll do target array list, um, and then I'll select the data, which is the underlying array, and I'll do target al size. So I'm using the index based on the size of my array list, which is zero starting off, and I'm setting that to the value. And then now I can take the size and add to it. I'm adding one to it 
since I just added a value. So the next value will be placed in the next slot over. However, if target AL size is target AL capacity, so if the size is equal to the capacity, the amount of items in it has reached the maximum. Uh, I'll, I'll print out something for now. So realloc percent D and target AL capacity. And then I'll set the new capacity to double the previous one. So this will just print out whatever the previous capacity was. And then I, I'll double it. And now I have to actually reallocate it. So target AL data equals realloc target AL data. So I'm just pointing and giving it the pointer to reallocate and it'll give me a new one with, with the new space restrictions. So I'm going to do size of an integer times target AL capacity, which is the new capacity. So it's taking all the data from here and moving it somewhere else with this new size, which is effectively double the previous size. And then it returns the pointer, which I will set to here. And that's that. So that will handle the append function. So I can add stuff in, but there's no convenient way to see what's in it yet. So I'm going to add another function. So I'm going to make a print AL function. It'll just take a target array list. And then for in I equals zero, I is less than target AL size, I plus plus. So that'll iterate over all the values of the array list. And I can just do print F percent D space target AL and then let's access that underlying array. So data, and then I can use the index I and that should print out every single value. And now for formatting purposes, I'm going to add a new line here and that should do that. So down here, let's actually add some values to my array list. So my array list, let's do append AL and let's add three seven and two. I need some cones. And then after that, I'll do print AL and my array list. So if you look down at the bottom here, it printed out three, seven and two, which are the values I added. And there's the 10 down here from the capacity. So while I'm here, I'm actually going to print out something else. I'll do data one. So I'll print out the second element so you can see that you can just access it that way. You could also modify it from here as well. You can do that equals two and it'll now print out two. That's after the print though, so you don't see it in the first print. Anyways, with that done, I need to show you how this reallocation works. So it should trigger theoretically when I hit the base capacity, which is 10. So I'm going to write a for loop. So for in i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. So I'll go over it 10 times and then I will just create um, a bunch of integers of the value i. So it'll be an array of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and I can run that. And I think that should be 10, which caused a reallocation. So I didn't actually use any of the extra space, but it did reallocate it. So if I want to put 100 values in, um, and you can see it reallocated. Uh, for an array of size 10 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 80, and you can't see it, but it did 80 to 160. And you can see values all the way up to 99 now. And it runs pretty fast as well. You can see, well, you can't really tell because it takes time for it to start up and everything, but that's still pretty fast, 60 mil 62 milliseconds. So just to prove the point, I'm gonna have to take out this thing here. I don't wanna print out all of these values, but I'm going to print that's 100,000, a million, let's do 10 million. So you can see in 0.1 seconds, I put 10 million items into my array list. So I can actually just do uh, print F percent D and I can do my array list and access the, um, let's do 5 millionth item. Oops, does that need to be, yeah, that needs to be data. So pull it from the data, get the 500,000th item or a 5 millionth item. Uh, as you can see, it comes out with whatever the index is because that's just kind of the way I made the array. So I'll multiply by three so you can see what ha is happening here. 
So you can see it outputted 15 million. So it's the 15 millionth item as determined by that. And if I want, I can just throw two more zeros on there. And how many is that? Three, six. So that is going to be a billion items. Let's see if that works. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. I didn't test this before. Oh, there it goes. I added a billion items into my array list in five seconds. So that's pretty much how array lists work. Although I still need to add pretty much one more thing, actually two more things to do this properly. Uh, first, I'm going to add a pop function. So this is just like the delete function, but I don't want to confuse it with the free function. Um, it's called pop because that's what uh, Python calls the removal function. So it'll take a target array list and then an index and it'll remove the value at that index. So if index is less than target array list size and index is more than or equal to zero, uh, those are just kind of the bounds for the values you can remove. If it's within those bounds, then I need to remove. So for int i equals index, so starting at the index that I've selected to remove from, um, I'll take i up until target al size minus one. And you'll see why this minus one is here in a second. So it's going through all the values from the index onward, except for the very last value. And with that, I can do target al data and I'll select the index and I will set it to the index plus one and that's why this minus one is here because you don't want to run this on the very last item because you're copy you're always trying to copy the value after it so you're always copying the value after down into the current slot this is the thing that I illustrated before in the example so with that done with just copying everything down shifting it left and overriding that value I didn't want I can do target al size minus minus. So I remove that last bit of space off the end of my list. So let's decrease this back down to 10 so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll run it as is so you can see what the normal output is. And I will remove this realloc thing because that's kind of unnecessary at this point. So it has all the values up to 27. So I can do pop al my array list and I can pop like the second value, for example. So that will pop the six and you'll see zero, three, nine, etc. See, see, there's no more six. And I can actually just keep running it on the same spot and it'll drop four values starting with six. Or I could pop and skip. So there's no six and then uh, there's no 15. Oh, also I need to show you this. You can also add values again and you can stick to 200 on the end. So it all works as intended. So the final thing to do, and this is just kind of a cleanup thing because I'm writing this in C, um, is to actually free up the memory when I'm done. So I'm going to add a delete function for the array lists. So target al, and I'll do free target al data and free target al. So at the end, when you're done using your array list, you would just want to do delete al and then my array list just to free up the memory. So that doesn't serve too much of a purpose in terms of the actual data structure. It's more of just a cleanup thing because people are going to yell at me if I don't do it. You can't even see that I'm doing anything. Um, if I ran valgrind, you would be able to tell. Uh, but yeah, so you delete it and you're done. Anyways, that's pretty much how array lists work, and that's an example of how you can code one up in C. Uh, in a lot of these data structures, I will be writing them in Python instead of C, or maybe I'll do both. But for this one, uh, it's very dependent on the way that arrays work on a lower level, and uh, specifically how they work in C. It just wouldn't really work trying to do this in Python. You could like artificially do it, but the restrictions of having an array of a limited size aren't really there. Next up, I'll probably be getting into how some sorting algorithms work. So hopefully you'll join me for the next video.